Jenny Harrington, uh, back with us, too. The other big story of the day, Buffett buying even more Occidental. And something that's been confounding to many, it's certainly from positioning, is the lack of performance from energy stocks this year. Right. Jenny. Well, I think the lack of performance part is, look, they had an enormous run in 2021 and 2022. And as we all know, when things go wild, they just need time to consolidate. But I think the way to look at Oxy or the holdings that I have, which are Pioneer and Devon, is you need to take a big global approach. And you can take a U.S.-centric approach and say, like, hey, we're not using as much gasoline. In fact, gasoline consumption peaked in 2019. But if you step back and look globally, you see that we're now consuming 100 million barrels of oil a day, and that's consistently growing at just shy of 1%. So as we've got EVs and work from home and all of that decreasing gasoline consumption. There's jet, there's um, more flying throughout the world, more jet fuel consumption. Um, developing economies are using way more gasoline. And that all trickles in to prop the price of oil up. So you look at an oxy and it's pretty cool. They've got 85% of their revenues come domestically. They're a little bit more diversified and have some exposure to the Middle East. They've got a lot in the Permian. And you've got a stock that's with, like, trading at like a really inexpensive valuation with decent growth ahead. If you want to play it from the dividend yield like I do, then you play it a, more, a little more U.S. centric and look at Pioneer and Devon. But the reality is, is all those stories are kind of the same, saying there is for, you know, at least the next 10 years, kind of endless demand mm -hmm. for fossil fuel consumption. You know, Mike, uh, you still have people saying energy is a place to be. When you ask them what they like, I like energy. They're not yeah. believers, many are not, in this, you know, counter trend move we've had in tech and the consumer and some sure. of these other places. Right. And you know, look, there is still a little more of an earnings base, a little more earnings momentum in some parts of energy than you're going to find elsewhere. At least it seems like it's more uh, stable. So I understand that. It also should be in the sort of value bucket that should do reasonably well when, you know, rates are higher and other types of cyclicals have been performing. So I understand it. You know, you're metabolizing, what was it, a 60 percent move last year? I mean, yeah. it's, it's kind of wild how far up it was. And while it looks like a diversion with the crude price, right, if you look over two years, it looks like energy stocks have held up too well relative to where the commodity has been over a longer period of time. It's not really the case. They're more or less in line over five years. So I don't think that's one of those things that you would throw at the sector. Um, but it is, you know, uh, it is interesting that you can either do it as a, as a proxy of the income play or it's a China's coming back and it's a long term kind of bull market in real assets, which is another I think it's another line of thinking around.